Hello friends, in this lecture we will discuss about liquidity adjustment facility and what are the different tools used under this facility and how RBI use this tool to control the money supply in the economy and control the inflation into the economy. So in this lecture we will learn the concept of repo rate, reverse repo rate and liquidity adjustment facility and what are what are its what are their implication on our economy what are their effects in our economy by increasing or decreasing the repo or reverse repo rate so in the end of this lecture you will able to understand concept of liquidity adjustment facility repo and reverse repo transaction what is corridor and effect of reverse repo and repo in our economy so first repo liquidity adjustment facility it is basically a monetary policy tool used by reserve bank to control short term money supply or inflation into our economy and uh, in 1998, Narsimha Committee on Banking Sector Reforms recommends the liquidity adjustment facility. Firstly, this concept was introduced in 1998 by Narsimha Committee on Banking Sector Reforms. Then RBI introduces interim LAF, means some of the functionalities of liquidity adjustment facilities introduced by RBI. And in 2000, RBI introduces full-fledged liquidity adjustment facility. Okay, so basically it is a uh, tool to control the money supply. In broad way, you can say this. So what are the different tools? There are two tools used under liquidity adjustment facility or to maintain the liquidity. Liquidity is nothing but money supply in the economy means liquidity means cash money supply okay so two tools used under liquidity adjustment facility are first one is repo rate repo or second one is reverse repo so uh, these are the two rates which are used in liquidity adjustment facility so first one is repo rate Repo rate is nothing but repurchase offer. It is a short form of repurchase offer. And you can also say sale and repurchase agreement. So basic core definition is that it is a collateralized lending. Means RBI. Collateralized lending means if anyone give you the loan or lends you, collateral is nothing but security based lending. Collateral is the security okay so how rbi do this we'll see this pictographically so here rbi will lend the money to the banks and banks will give the security to the reserve bank and this security which banks gives to the rbi with the agreement that this security will be repurchased by bank in future from rbi okay so it is not just a simple lending it is a condition based lending okay it is it is basically an agreement between reserve bank and bank so what is the basic definition in bank borrows money from rbi to meet their short term needs by selling securities by selling securities to rbi with an agreement to repurchase the same securities in future and what are the securities used in this transaction in repo transaction the basic securities are, uh, are government or treasury bills corporate or government bonds mutual funds and stocks these are the basic securities which are generally used in repo transactions and in this these securities are uh, used in the transaction except slr securities uh, in the previous lecture, I have discussed about what is statutory liquidity ratio. So the securities used in SLR for maintaining SLR rate, 
banks cannot use that securities in repo transaction security kept for slr transactions for slr maintaining slr rate the statutory liquidity rate they cannot use those securities here okay so this is just a condition for selling securities to rbi and the rate charged by rbi for this whole transaction is known as repo rate okay so basically whenever whenever rbi uh, decrease the repo rate okay whenever rbi decrease the repo rate it injects liquidity into the system so repo rate is basically known for injecting liquidity into the market into the banking system into the economy okay whenever rbi wants to increase the money supply it will in decrease the repo rate now comes reverse repo reverse repo is nothing but just reverse of repo rate what is it in this case banks parks their excess short term money excess short term money means sometimes banks have some excess money apart from maintaining crr slr and all that all the rate some excess money or profit money of the day they have to park those money park that money uh, somewhere in secure reason okay so rbi is the best secure reason to park the money of banks that's why banks park their excess money to rbi and rbi gives the interest rate to the banks also for parking the excess money and reserve bank will give the security to the banks also means it parks their excess money with the condition that it will sell the securities it will give the it will give back their securities to the banks which they have given in the repo transactions means it will not simply take the money from banks and give the interest rate it will give the security in return and park their excess money okay so this reverse repo rate is basically known for absorbing liquidity into the system so sometimes question asked in uh, multiple choice questions in general awareness banking awareness sections that uh, which rate is used for injecting liquidity into the system so for injecting liquidity into the system repo rate is used and for absorbing liquidity in the system this reverse repo rate is used now the difference between repo and reverse repo rate is known as is called as corridor and is generally it is 100 100 basis points okay it is basically 100 basis basis point which is nothing but 1% so for example if uh, if repo rate is 6.5% and uh, reverse repo is 5.5 so the gap of 1% is known as corridor which they have to maintain by 100 basis point or 1% so now the question comes why repo rate always kept higher than reverse repo rate so in case of whole repo transaction in case of repo rbi act as a banker to bank because it provides uh, short term loans to banks and charges interest rate on it and in case of reverse repo banks keeps their money or deposit in rbi and rbi gives interest on deposits okay so this is this whole transaction of repo and reverse repo is uh, like a banking transaction for between banks and rbi so like any other bank rbi has to keep some spread gap or you can say profit margin to cover its cost and intermediation so that's why rbi cannot give more interest on deposits and charge lesser interest on loans because here interest on deposit means reverse repo because banks are keeping their excess funds parking their excess funds in rbi and rbi is giving interest rate on it and in case of here interest on loans means uh, rbi is giving loan to banks in the form of repo and charges interest rate on it so it is very clear that rbi cannot give more interest on deposits and charge lesser interest on loans that's why repo rate is always kept higher than reverse repo rate because rbi has to keep some margin has to keep some spread or it can say gap 
to cover the its costs and intermediation and transaction costs. Now, now whenever RBI requires to tight money policy or wants to contract money supply in the economy, it increases the repo rate. Okay, means the lending is now becomes costly. Increase the repo rate. Those uh, in that case, the lending for short term money supply becomes costly. So in the short term, in the short period of time, the liquidity into the system will decrease. Okay, it will contract. And whenever RBI requires eased money policy or wants to expand the money supply in the economy, it decreases the repo rate. Whenever it decreases the repo rate, then it will inject liquidity into the system. Lending in that case becomes cheaper. Okay. In this case, lending is costly. And in this case, lending is cheap. So, thanks guys for watching my lecture. And if you liked my lecture, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, Banking Sutra. Thank you.